So we have a patient here who came in for um, an AP resection and ran into complications afterwards with severe bowel ischemia due to a very tight SMA stenosis, virtually an occlusion. And he's had two uh, segments of small bowel resected um, since he was transferred, before he was transferred to our hospital, in fact. Uh, now he's here, we're going to try and open up his SMA and increase perfusion to the remaining bowel he's got. Just going to go all the way down to the artery with a local anaesthetic. I know the patient's anaesthetised anyway, but we're, we're still going to use it. Right, okay, that's fine. So we've got the destination sheath as well, please. And have some gauze, please. Thank you. Right, so I'll take that wire in. Ultrasound can go. Okay, so this is a renal double curve destination sheath, which I'm hoping will give us a good angle to get onto this SMA. So, wire tight, please. Pin the wire, thank you. Thank you. So we're just going to now take this up. Just going to take the inner out. Okay, and can I have that four French cobra, please? So there is some dense calcification there, and I wonder if that could be the origin of the SMA, because we know it's heavily calcified on the CT scan. Okay, I've got the cobra, thank you. And I've got wire. Only thing here with using the sheath and the cobra is I've got two curves and they could work against each other if I'm not careful. Okay, so we've got that out of the end. If you can take the wire out, please, and I'll have some contrast, thank you. So what I'll probably do is just pull the cobra back into this renal double curve sheath. Now we're going to try and face that anteriorly. Be careful with these because the valves can actually come unscrewed because they're designed to come off and you can find yourself pulling things and the whole thing comes off. There we go, and that's the origin of the SMA. If you angle towards me, that'll work. Right, so we've got a very tight stenosis, not a complete occlusion, which is good news, because hopefully that gives us more of a chance of getting through it and placing a stent. So we've got two areas of stenosis, very tight osteal stenosis, then a second area there. We certainly want to stent that first area. We could probably stent the second as well, but we'll plastic them first to see. Um, so what I'd like now, please, is an angle terumo, please. So an angle slippy wire, please. Thank you, with a torque device, thank you. So I'm just very gently manoeuvring this hydrophilic wire through those stenoses and just move my torque device there, so I'll pull my wire back slightly and it's gone very, very easily. I want this to go down the main SMA, so I'm keeping it, keep steering the wire so it just goes vertically rather than into all these side branches. It's going into side branches as we go, so we've got to keep redirecting it. We can then take our four French cafter through there. It's gone very easily. And what I'm going to do now, I think we can get away with this over this wire because the angles are good. We're just going to advance our sheath into the ostium, just into the origin, but no further than that. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to pull that back slightly. Right, what I'd like now is my 018 wire, please. Which so This is a V18 wire, which is a very supportive wire with a floppy end. We're just going to take it down to where the cobra is. 
and this 018 wire is going to allow us to then use an 018 system to plasti this and stent it. The advantage of the 018 is it's lower profile and is more likely to cross this lesion. Now, I'm being very careful with this wire at the end here because it would be very easy to dissect with this wire and it's gone very, very easily down there. So I'm now going to take the four French Cobra out over that, fixing my hand each time so the wire doesn't move. Quick flow there, just check nothing's changed, nothing's changed. And we'll take the Cobra off, please. Yeah. Now we're going to do a run through the sheath now. And we're going to do this magged. So can we mag one, please? Can we stop respiration again, please? Let's check. That's better. Yeah. Tell me when. Okay, you can breathe again, thank you. Right, so our sheath has actually gone into the ostium there quite nicely. Just go back one image, please. Oh, okay, forward one. Forward one more. Back one. Fine, okay. Right, so let's have our balloon, please. So we're going to pre-dilate this with a five millimeter angioplasty balloon. And then we're going to place a tsunami balloon expandable stent and it's going to be a seven millimeter stent okay so this is our five millimeter by 20 millimeter balloon over an 018 system we're just going to advance that through to the stenosis there it is okay so we're going to start with that more distal stenosis and we're going to plasty that first okay just forward wind a little bit please thank you so we're now going to come back and plasty just at the ostium so I'm taking my sheath back a tiny amount bringing the balloon back to the start of the sheath and we're going to plasty that again and it's jumped forward so what we're going to have to do now is pull our sheath back a little bit for a little bit further and get that balloon balanced across that stenosis so it doesn't jump forward again hopefully that's in about the right place there just going into the aorta this can slowly inflate and we're bang across it you can see it's pushed our sheath back with it as i've inflated it going to deflate now just going to push that sheath forward slightly right so we're now just going to take this balloon out and we're going to have a look with some contrast and then we're going to place a balloon expanding stent so these stents you can over expand them and under expand them depending on what pressure you put the balloon up to there's a little bit of leeway so if you inflate it to 12 atmospheres you get 7.22 millimeters 14 atmospheres you get 7.39 so we're going to go up to 14 because this is actually a bigger diameter vessel the advantage of the balloon expandable stent is you can place them more accurately rather than a self-expanding stent and this is a rapid exchange system so what that means is the wire will come out part way along here which means you don't need really long wires to put them in So I'm just going to check the position of my sheath. Store that fluoro, please. Right, so our stent needs to come to exactly where the sheath is, possibly even just, just poking into the aorta very slightly will be a good position for this. And then I think we might put a second stent just beyond it. So a rapid exchange system, the guide wire comes out here. So I'm just going to pin my wire here and then advance a stent. And we're just going to see what that looks like. Store that fluoro, please. Contrast, please. Yeah. 
So now we can have a final check through the sheath. And that's a good position, I'm happy with that. Now we'll inflate the balloon, we're gonna go up to 14 atmospheres. So, can I have a forward wind, because there's, there's some air in there, keep forward winding. So, slowly gonna expand that, check it's staying exactly where we want it. Hopefully it's not gonna march forwards. Perfect. There's still, even at 14 atmospheres, there's some eccentric stenosis there. So we've gone up to 16 atmospheres there. So we'll now have a look at this and see if we need to put a further stent in. We may not do, actually. So we're now going to deflate the balloon. If I can give you the weight of that whilst it's deflating, I'm going to fix my wire and I'm just going to pull the balloon the stent was mounted on slowly back. And out through the sheath. And we're making sure we keep our wire across the lesion we've treated. And if you can take that off now, please. I've got the wire. So we'll just do a DSA run now and see what this looks like. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to place another 7mm by 18mm tsunami stent. We're just going to take it further around the corner there to hopefully cover that second area of plaque. Right, so we're now going to pin the wire again, advance the stent in. And we're just going to screen that. Can we fade on now, please? It's just caught slightly on the previous stent. And that's where we want to be there. And store that fluoro, please. So we're balanced right across that stenosis. And that's up to 18 atmospheres. Okay, got that? Right, I'm just very carefully trying to pull that back. It's gonna push my sheath slightly forward, make it easier to pull it out, there we go. I think we do have overlap there. In fact, we do. We do have overlap, that's fine. Okay. I think that's as good as we're going to get that. All right, can we come off mag, come back to AP? We'll just do one run looking down the SMA and check there's no other mischief going on down there. So we're just going to do this pump run through the sheath. The sheath's big calibre. We've got a stented segment of vessel here. I'm not worried about jets of contrast causing any disruption or anything like that. Uh, can we go at four a second this time, please? 20 mils at six mils a second. Right, so we're just going to come out through this stented segment now. Right, screening away please and we'll have a star close. So I'm just going to make our incision slightly bigger, which it's big enough. We're now going to use some blunt dissection down to the level of the vessel to help put the star close in. So I'm going to take this sheath out and you could put the star close sheath on for me, please. So that's the sheath there, yeah. So although this is a six French renal double curved sheath, it's outside diameter is actually considerably bigger than six French. So if you could take that off and we'll have the star close sheath on. So the hole we're trying to close here is probably at least seven French. If you can pin the wire, please. 
So that's going in. Then the inner bit of the sheath and the wire come out together. Feed it in from the front till it clicks. That's one. We're then going to put the vessel locator out. That's two. We're then going to pull it back till it's located on the inner wall of the vessel. A little bit of gentle tension. Come up to this angle. We're going to strip the sheath. It clicks. That's three. Come up to about that angle. No forward, no backward pressure. Perhaps slightly forward. Fire and just maintain pressure, a little bit of massage for a few seconds and let's see if that's worked. That's the star close deployed.